deserves it. Oh, really? Where are you going? Okay. hard work. My mom got it for me as a gift. Thank you. So kind to hear that before service. Yes. Well, good morning, and welcome to worship again. I always think about the fact that every time we come to worship, that just like it was a possibility for us to be in the house of the Lord one more time, 
it was also the possibility of us not being in the house of the Lord one more time. So while we're here, let us be thankful and let us give our gratitude and our praise to the Lord for being in the Lord's house one more time. We gather in the name of Christ to relish good God's great love for us. Spread it to everyone. I am Chitoka Webb, Christ Presbyterian's church intern chaplain. The Reverend Linda Lane Bertell, the pastor of this wonderful church, is on sabbatical leave, and I am, unfortunately, your preacher for today. <laughs> Welcome to our live stream worshipers. Please note that the service is being recorded and is available on YouTube. There are several ways to participate in worship today. And I know you are dying to know those ways. We have prayer cards on the back of the seats. Please feel free to fill them out and give them to the usher, which is the one and only Marshall who does everything Yes, please give them to Marshall during the sermon starter. Feel free to light a candle for a person, a situation, or maybe even a difficult circumstance. We have art that's available uh, at the tables on this side of the church and on that side of the church. And we have coffee. This is the only church that I know of until anybody else tells me different that you can have coffee doing worship and not get wrote up. We have coffee, we have honey buns, nutty buddies, Twinkies. Uh, what else we got over there? We got miniature Twinkies and something else. So, we are serious when we say all are welcome. <laughs> yes. So please greet one another. Introduce yourselves. Don't tell your whole life story because we only got a little bit of time. And please come back together when I ring the chime.
Cook. My name is Tanya Noski. I'm today's worship leader. Please stand as you're comfortable in joining me to call to worship as found in your bulletin. Please read the bowl. Sign, sing to God a new song. Sing to God all the earth. Sing and praise God. Please join me singing hymn 31, Christ has ridden while the earth. Please join me in the prayer of confession. God of the spirit of kindness, in the glory of earth and sea and stars, in the kaleidoscope of color and shade and shapelessness, in the patterns of our humor and tenderness and touch, we celebrate your generosity. Forgive us when we forget the gift is in our every breath, the care that sustains our every moment, that grace that can transform our every day. Set us free from the prison of grudging hearts, mean desires, resentful spirits. Give us the courage to act with justice and generosity and draw us into the love that does not calculate or keep scores. The good news, the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. I declare to you in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. And that is good news to be forgiven. Amen. Now, let us listen for the word of God. We will be reading today from the book of Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 3 through 14. Let us hear what the Lord God is saying to us. He said to me, mortal 
can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord, you know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus said the Lord to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live. And you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded. And as I prophesied, I suddenly, there was, and suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked and there were sinews on them and flesh came upon them and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy mortal and say to the breath, thus said the Lord God, Come from four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, mortal, these bones, are the whole house of Israel. They say our bones are dried up. Our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Hmm. Therefore prophesy and say to them, thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O oh, my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O oh, my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live. And I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. For the word of God in Scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. God, my feet, Lord, while I run this race. God, my feet, Lord, while I run this race. God, my feet, Lord, while I run this race. For I don't want to run this race in vain. Hold my hand, Lord, while I run this race. Hold my hand, Lord, while I run this race. Hold my hand, Lord, while I run this race, for I don't want to run this race in vain. Stand by me, Lord, while 
Today, I am going to be sharing with you what hope, what a hope answered looks like. Ezekiel was 50 years old when he got this vision about these dry bones. And as I thought about it, this year I will turn 50. And it's interesting because when, when I was younger, before I turned 16, I knew what I wanted. I wanted a car. I knew before I turned 21 what I wanted. I wanted a good job and to be wealthy. But you know what? After a certain age, you stop wishing for things. And you start hoping for things. And then I asked myself one day, why is that? Why did I change from wishing for something to hoping for something? And I realized that wishing is something that originates from your own heart. But hope originates from God's heart. And that's why turning 50, I thought about it. I didn't have any wishes, but I do know that I turned out to be the woman that I had hoped to be. I do know that I had made, I have made changes that I hoped to make that I visualize at being at eight and 11 and just thinking about all the things that I could do to make the world a better place. But I was embarrassed, so I just did it. I just showed up to church all the time and helped out and this and that. But that's not something you go telling your friends. But when you get older, you're okay with hoping out loud. And so today, I want you to think with me, or I invite you to think with me about being planned on purpose. 
Ezekiel was a prophet and a priest. The name Ezekiel means God is my strength. Ezekiel is highly regarded and respected across all three main religions, which is Christianity, Islam, and Buddhism, and Hinduism. I'm sorry, it's four. Belonging to the tribe of Levi, Ezekiel was born around 1623. BCE in Jerusalem. At the age of 30 years old, Ezekiel began to record his visions while in captivity. Ezekiel was one of the exiles taken into captivity by King Nebuchadnezzar, who was the king of Babylon. The Babylonians had begun to besiege, attack, and raid Jerusalem. Ezekiel records his vision of Israel's restoration after the exile and assures his fellow Jews that God would return them to Jerusalem and restore their temple. And that the Lord's promises to gather them from captivity and return them to their promised lands and renew his covenant with them and reunite the kingdoms of Israel and Judah. God's new covenant with Israel says, I will give you a new heart and put in you a new spirit. I will remove you from your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees. And be careful to keep my laws. Then you will live in the land I gave your ancestors. And you will be my people. And I will be your God. Ezekiel was assuring the Jews that God's promise still stands. And sometimes, with all of the barrage of negativity that we have upon us in the grocery stores, driving down the street, going out to get dinner, sometimes just smiling to someone can make them angry. Sometimes just saying hello can make them want to slap you. Sometimes it's easy to forget in a world like this that God's promise still stands. At the start of 593 BCE, Ezekiel, prophesied for over 22 years. And he was 50 years old when he prophesied this final prophecy. While he was in captivity, he was called by God to be a watchman over Israel. The watchman's job was to stand in a high place and scan the horizon for the enemies of Israel. And when he saw them approaching, he was responsible for warning the Jews of the impeding threats of danger and for them to prepare 
for the barrage of terror headed their way. And if he failed to warn them on time, he would be blameworthy and held accountable for the loss of innocent blood. Ezekiel chapter 33 verse 6 says, but if the watchman sees the sword coming down and does not blow the trumpet to warn the people. The sword comes down and takes someone's life. That person's life will be taken because of their sin. But I will hold the watchman accountable for their blood. What I am trying to tell you is that even in exile, Ezekiel had a job. He was responsible for making sure to warn the Jews ahead of the time limit laid down. That death was coming. And it was bringing slaughter with it. And it was in the trenches of evil and war that Ezekiel was trying to convince a rebellious people that even when things don't look promising and it looks like nothing is working, he wanted them to know that God is working. And that God's promise still stands. What Ezekiel is showing us is that when you're doing God's work, storms that seem to have one way in and no way out will come and stand in front of you and not move. And when they come, You'll have to lean on God's unchanging hand. Lean on God's trustworthiness. Lean on God who has a plan for you. Plans for you to prosper and not to harm you. Oh, and never forget. That ancient, that that ancient promise. And in that promise, you, all of us, are a part of God's DNA. And you, beloved, are always stuck on God's mind. You are the apple of God's eye. And just like us, Israel needed to be reminded over and over again that in God's plan, God would rather love us than judge us. God is not like people. God would rather to complete us than to delete us. Oh, I said, God is not like people. But God's message fell on their ears. Though the Jews had to leave their city and their land and walk more than 700 miles through the desert with the smell of the burning city that they left behind, they could still smell it on their clothes. They were overcome by the pressures and the forces that ran them off. And it's evil enticements. The Jews began to sink into a rebellion 
against God. Ezekiel continued to encourage the Jews, assuring them that the restoration of the Lord was still good. That's good news. And that it was still present. He reminded the Jews not to bail out, but to seek out the Lord in dark times, align themselves with the one true God. But again, the message fell on deaf ears. But Ezekiel never ceased trusting the Lord. Going through this life, you are going to need to be around people who still trust God. You're going to need friends, loved ones, a community that still trusts God. So Ezekiel never ceased in trusting in the Lord. Oh, Ezekiel says, in verse 37, the hand of the Lord was on me and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. And it was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them. And I saw a great many of bones on the floor of the valley. The bones that were very dry. God set Ezekiel down in the middle of the valley because he was ripe for a transition. To see the transition that God had for the Jews appointed as a watchman. He was the gatekeeper of the hope of God for God's people. He was the gatekeeper of an old, ancient promise that vowed never to leave you nor forsake you, to give you grace and perfect power in your weakness. God set Ezekiel down in the middle of the valley because the Spirit of the Lord was upon him. The Spirit of God gives us the ability to perceive unforeseen danger while it's in the making. You can perceive the difference between the person who will give you breath and the person who will take your breath. Ezekiel could perceive who was coming to give life and who was coming to destroy it. Ezekiel understood the Jews' pain, their frustration, and their spiritual dehydration. He was one of them. He was amongst them. He was feeling the same thing that they were feeling. And that was all the fixings that come with war and exile. Because he was in exile with them. In other words, his feet hurt too. But Ezekiel knew that Israel had been divided and dispersed for so long that unification and restoration seemed Impossible. So God gave Ezekiel the vision of the valley of dry bones as a sign that Israel would be restored to her land. That she would be unified and made whole again. And that's the covenant 
is a covenant promise sworn by a divine oath. Oh, in other words, what Ezekiel is saying in layman terms is that God's promise still stands. In Ezekiel's vision, the Lord hauls Ezekiel through the valley full of dry bones in which he visualizes that exile is like death. Oh, Ezekiel knew that the only thing that happens in exile is the separation of heaven and earth. The dry bones were beyond any possibility of life. Then the Lord asked Ezekiel, can these bones live? And in, in other words, can the process of death, decay, and decomposition be reversed? When looking at those dry bones, the human mind would have answered, no. But Ezekiel remembered Genesis chapter 18, verse 14. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Oh, in Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 17. Ah, sovereign Lord, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power. An outstretched arm. Nothing mm, is too hard for you. Then the Lord commands Ezekiel to prophesy the word of the Lord to the dry bones. Anytime God commands a prophet to prophesy, there is about to be a resurrection. Ezekiel says, and as I was prophesying, there was a noise, hmm, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. And I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them. Just when it seems like all hope is gone, God can turn it around. The word of the Lord calls the bones to miraculously resuscitate hmm, themselves. Then Ezekiel notices that there was no breath in them. The Lord tells him, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come, breath, from the four winds and breathe into these slain that they may live. So I prophesied and he com as he commanded me, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood on their feet. A vast army of them. Oh, God! was trying to show Ezekiel that the exile of Israel was not the end of Israel. And what I'm saying to you, though it may seem like in your life you are facing a situation that seems to be a one way in and no way out. That at the end of your rope, God's promises still stand. At the end of your rope, I will never leave you nor forsake you. At the end of your rope is the help that you've been praying for. Every answer 
that you need is in your faith. Every hope that you can think of and imagine is already right where it is. The Bible says that there is nothing new under the sun. God says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And if you would have just the faith of a mustard seed, the faith of the mustard seed, which is the smallest seed on earth, God's promise still stands. And you are in it. You are so in it that you could not remove yourself if you wanted to. The end is when we think about an end. In these valleys of dry bones, it looked like the end. And what God is showing us here is that it will always look like, look like the end when you're trying to do it on your own. It always looked like the end when you don't do it with God. When you leave God out of it. God gave us an unending world. God's hope is unending. The breath in those bones is the breath in our lives and in our bones. And it is the resurrection. The resurrection is in God's covenant promise. And I want you to know today, and I hope you keep this in mind, that God's promise still stands. Amen. Please stand. And join me in singing hymn number 630, Fairest Lord Jesus.
you have any prayer cards? Any prayer cards? Okay, thank you. Let us pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, our creator and sustainer, we pray for those stomachs that are empty. We pray for those facing critical food shortages and suffering from the effects of malnutrition and starvation. We pray for every kitchen, every plate, and oh God, especially the small plates, and every basket that is empty of food. We pray for those who are looking for you, for your compassion and love and feel alone without you. And may those that long for meaning and connections to be accepted and to belong as they are, we pray that they not become hopeless. We pray for those who are overwhelmed with grief, pain, and troubles that seem to pour down like waterfalls, that run us over and run us down, leaving us spiritually empty. We pray for our communities, for our own families, and for other families. Some of us need different things and benevolence unbeknownst to us. Some of us need the same things. Gracious God, help us to learn that we are more alike than we are different. Help us to welcome each other and talk and listen to each other so that we may see that in you and with you, we are all one family in Christ. We pray that the spirit of patience and thoughtful kindness replace contempt with compassion, replace detest with desire. Help us to recognize that words do hurt, though they may not break our bones, but oh, they break our hearts. Help us to know that we can depend on you and trust you. You are our refuge and our forever hope, love, and understanding. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now let us pray together the prayer Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us now return to God the offering of our life and the gifts of the earth. If you'd like to give a gift today, please put it in the offering plate as it is passed.
Oh God, we thank you for all the gifts you've given us. We offer our gifts today for the ministers of the church. Bless them as we seek to serve you. Amen. Please join me singing 557. Go, my children, with my blessing. It is with the ultimate joy and excitement that today I announce to you that Christ Presbyterian Church will be hosting the very first Juneteenth celebration event in San Rafael, Terra Linda, on Saturday, June the 15th, from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. On June the 17th, 2021, President Joseph Biden Is that good? Okay, excellent. On June the 17th, 2021, President Joseph Biden signed the bill P.L. Tooltip Public Law. I don't know what that name derives from, but that's the name of the bill. Uh, making Juneteenth the 11th American federal holiday, and the first to obtain legal op observance as a federal holiday since Martin Luther King Jr. Day was designated in 1983. All 50 states in the District of Columbia recognized Juneteenth as a holiday or observance, and at least 22 states and the District of Columbia have designated Juneteenth as a permanent 
paid and legal holiday through the legislation or executive action. Juneteenth is a holiday that highlights the contributions, inventions, and landmarks all made by and made possible from the contributions of African Americans. Christ Presbyterian Church's Juneteenth celebration event Ours is going to be different. We are going to be highlighting the historical first in Moran County. And thanks to Tom Rupaner, he recommended me to talk. He took it upon himself. He called me one day. And he said, yeah, I'm that old, I'm old, that old guy you, you met not too long ago. And he said, I wanted to talk to you about Juneteenth. And so we talked about it. And I was like, okay, this is my idea. This is my thought and so forth. I said, get you a pen and a piece of paper. I said, well, okay. Uh. <laughs> so I got a pen and a piece of paper. And he's like, write these names down. So one of them was a community a patrol officer at the San Rafael Police Department. So I contacted her, and I was trying to explain to her who I was, and then I told her about Tom. And she said, oh, yes, yeah. she said, he, he called here one day. She said, as a matter of fact, he called more than me. <laughs> and he said that he went to this wonderful church and that, uh, you know, their church was having this event. I hadn't even talked to Tom yet. I was just talking about it to Linda, and he just happened to be in the room. But anywho, so she told me that he had called her and some other people at the San Rafael Police Department to tell him about this one, his wonderful church that was having this historical event, and how could they help? So, and then she asked me, she said, uh, she said is he your uncle, or? Is he your dad? I said, no. I said, Tom is not, we're not kin, you know. And so then I get there and I go to see her. She introduces me to her sergeant. And she tells him about Tom. Now, now, rem now remind you, they've never met Tom in person. They've only talked to Tom on the phone for a few minutes. And so the sergeant says, Oh, yeah, you know, that's the man with that wonderful church out there. By, it's in Terra Linda. I said, yes, in Terra Linda. He said, oh, he said, is that your uncle? Is that your father? I said, no. I said, we're not kin. And, but, but the point that I want to make is he got me to the right place because now the San Rafael Police Department is going to be joining us in this celebration. And because we are celebrating a history of first, and I want you to know, if you find anything where an African American was the first of anything in San Rafael or Terra Linda, please let me know that. That is what I'm highlighting. So right now, the first African American police chief, David Spiller, is the acting interim police chief of San Rafael. The first African-American fire chief just resigned about six months ago. I've also located the first African-American dispatcher. I want to at least get to 50 finding the first African-American who's made a contribution to something in San Rafael and Terra Linda. And so I have also been, I have been in contact with the mayor. Uh, she has told me that if she's checking her schedule, if she cannot attend, she would get one of her co-counsels to attend. Um, I have also uh, in contact, this is the greatest news, uh, with the founding member the founding organizer of the largest annual Juneteenth Festival event in Moran County, which is in Moran City. Her name is Oshala 
Marcus, and she is the director of the Marin City Arts and Culture Organization. And last year, she helped Mill Valley to organize their first Juneteenth event. And this year, she is going to help Vallejo and us to celebrate our Juneteenth event. And there is more information to come, but I would like to share with you what is Juneteenth. June 19, 1865 marks the date that Major General Gordon Granger arrived in Galveston, Texas and announced the end of both the Civil War and slavery. The Emancipation Proclamation issued by President Abraham Lincoln legally freed the enslaved in Texas on January the 1st, 1863, almost two, year, two and a half years earlier. Even after the general order, some enslavers withheld. The information from the enslaved people, holding them enslaved through one more harvest season. Nothing like free labor. Texans celebrated Juneteenth beginning in 1861 with community-centric events such as parades, cookouts, prayer gatherings, historical and cultural readings, and musical performances. Over time, communities have developed their own traditions. Some communities purchase land for Juneteenth celebrations such as Emancipation Park in Houston, Texas. As families immigrated from Texas to other parts of the United States, they carried Juneteenth celebrations with them. And I want our tradition, I want our footstep, footprint in this historical moment for our Juneteenth to be one that celebrates the first contributions that African Americans have made in San Rafael and Terralinda, or San Rafael, Terralinda. I'm also now working um, with uh, the council members to find out who was the first council member of San Rafael. Who was the first African-American teacher of a local school here? Who was the first courtesy clerk at Safeway? It's going to be an exciting event, and I will have more information and updates to come periodically as we go along. Now I will ask Sarah to please come because she has some good news. <laughs> you want to Thank you that? so much. Okay. I, I, yeah. okay. Cool. I'll use that at the end. All right. Yeah. So, good news. My goodness. It's hard to do this job because there's always so many good things we're doing nowadays. I saw the community fridge had some food in it this morning. Um, it was really lovely to see. And uh, I love it. Next week we'll have the Miller Creek Jazz Alumni Combo. Curious what that's made up of next week, along with Joanne Witt, who'll be preaching for the next two Sundays from uh, a retired pastor from First Presbyterian in San Anselmo, who always does an awesome job, like Chipoka. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So, but uh, I got a call last night from. The Nicaragua Service Project teacher, uh, lead teacher, Peggy Curhan, who su succeeded in teaching my son some Spanish back in the day. <laughs> back when my son was at Terralinda High School, they started uh, going to um, this group of kids from Terralinda, started the Nicaragua Service Project. And um, the kids at that time, before COVID, 
would actually get a group together and they would travel to nicaragua and they would help with the school building the school etc i think christie's kids were probably involved as well or knew the kids who were so um so this project has been going on since 2009 and this year a week from saturday they're going to be here in our uh, sanctuary they're going to have the naka tamales for sale. They're mm. going to have hibiscus tea. And they, they're going to have a silent auction, uh, handmade ceramics, and they're going to do a jewelry upsell, which means if you have some jewelry at home that you think people might want, but you don't want to give it to Goodwill, but you don't want it, you want it to go to a good cause, yada, yada, <laughs> bring it for them to sell from noon to four, Saturday, April 27th. And next week we'll have more flyers for you um but just uh i hope to see you next su uh, sunday and if you do if you want to pre if you won't be here next week and you want to pre-order tamales let me know i'll make a list for them so jesus says to each of us you are the light of the world and mm. no one after lighting a lamp puts it under a bushel basket but on the lampstand and it gives light to all in the house we rejoice that this good news gives light to the people of our community. Following the charge and blessing, you are invited to remain seated for the postlude. Go down in peace and know that when you run out of hope, that there's still hope available. Know that when you get weary and you get tired, that God's promise still stands. Hold on to it and keep it close and put all your might and your trust in it. Amen. Um.